Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we get to do something different. Today marks eight years of making painting videos. That's a long time. I really just wanted to say thank you so much for the amazing support. Now, before the Q&A part of this video, I just wanted to take a couple of seconds to talk about some of my long-term goals and what I'd like to do with this channel going forward. Now, I'm going to do something that I've never done before, which is set a subscriber goal. It's nothing new, just something I've never actually done. I'd like to see us get to 1 million subscribers, and I know you guys can do it because you're amazing. This is just a fun goal. We're going to continue to make painting videos and try to learn and get better each time we do it. It wouldn't be much of a goal if we didn't have something fun at the end. Now, eight years ago, I did my very first painting video, and I was 16 years old, and back then I didn't know that you weren't supposed to show everybody's logos in your videos, so I took them down a long time ago. What I'm in the process of doing is going in and blurring out all those logos so that I could re-upload them. I thought it would be kind of fun and special to save that for the next big milestone, so I'm really excited. But to help celebrate eight years of doing painting videos, I want to show you a quick clip of my very first video. Now, don't laugh too much. Hey guys, um, I'm Kevin Hill. I'm 16, and today we're going to do a fun little painting. I've already uh, covered our canvas with thin white oil paint, and we'll just do a fun painting with trees and uh, maybe a path in a cabin. So we'll get started. I really just wanted to use this as an opportunity to say thank you. I really appreciate your support. All right, let's jump into the Q&A part of this video. Now, a few days ago, we put out on Facebook and on Instagram that we're going to be doing a Q&A video, and I asked for some questions. So these are just a few. There's a bunch of questions. I can't get to them all, unfortunately, but I'm going to do my best and especially hit ones that have been asked multiple times. This first batch here comes from Instagram. If you don't already follow us on Instagram, definitely go check that out. But let's start here with what brushes and paint do you use? So for the oil side of it, I've got my own brush line, which is right here. <laughs> and I use Gamblin 1980 oil paints. And for the acrylics, I've got my own brushes, which are put away, and paints, which I've got right here. All of that is available on the website, paintwithkevin.com, as well as full ink lessons and other fun stuff like that. All right, next question. Is it necessary to varnish an oil painting? So personally, I don't varnish a lot of my paintings. I just never get around to it because you usually have to wait about six months for them to fully cure. At least that's what the directions usually say. If you want to go with a varnish, I like a, I like a glossy varnish because it kind of brightens the colors. It just makes it look really pretty. I have varnished a few in the past and I, I do like the gloss varnish. One tip for you is read the directions on the label and just follow them exactly because the last thing you want to do is mess up your painting. It's definitely something to look into. All right, the next question here is how long have I been painting? So I've been painting since I was 15, you know, dabbling in oils since I was 15, and I made my first video when I was 16, which you've already seen and probably laughed at. This is a really good next question here. Any advice for getting into a gallery space setting? That's a good question because it seems kind of daunting at first, but it's really not so hard. The first thing I would do is get some pretty decent pictures of your paintings. You know, maybe use your phone in a window, get some good light on them, get some good pictures of the paintings, and you can bring those to the art gallery. A good way to start is just go to the front desk and say, hey, I'm local and I'd like to submit my artwork. And they'll usually give you an email address or maybe even set up a meeting with the person you need to talk to. It's good to have your paintings there, but just pictures usually do the trick. And if your local gallery doesn't work out, that's okay, because there's a lot of galleries that accept people all around the country. You want to make sure that you're submitting paintings that you spent quite a long time on. You want to refine the brush strokes, make sure they're high quality. It's really not that hard, and it's a fun way to get started kind of doing art business. How do you create mist in a painting? Mist is pretty simple. You can usually take a blender brush or one inch brush and roll some white kind of over the background. The only problem you might run into is if you've got too much gloppy thick paint in the background. This painting behind me just happens to be one that I did recently, but you can just, you know, limit the amount of paint. You can roll that mist right over. It's super easy as long as you limit the paint. If you have too much paint, it becomes a big problem. So what you can do is just take a shop towel and wipe off the, the canvas and then roll your mist over that, especially if you're doing a mountain. Wipe that mountain off, put your mist over. It makes it a lot easier. Next question here is how many hours do I paint in a day? Well, one of these paintings, you know, this one for instance, any of them, but this just happens to be the one that's up here. This could take anywhere between six to eight hours. You don't want to do that all at once. You need to sit down, have lunch, take breaks, that's fine. But if you're not on a time crunch and you don't need to get a video out every week, you may want to spend several weeks on a painting. It just kind of depends on the situation. So our next question here is how do you spread the paint so evenly when you do a base color without getting it to look rough? It's a good question because it's actually a little more to it than you might think. So you have your two inch brush. If you're doing X strokes, like if you're putting in your dark paint, you're, you're doing X strokes, it usually doesn't fill in real well. But if you do circles, you'll grind it into the canvas and it actually works a lot better. 
This next question's funny. What do you think about when you're painting? Well, as long as it's not lunchtime, I'm not thinking about lunch. Uh, usually I'm thinking about, is my head in the way? Is my hand in the way? Those things usually happen, don't they? No, what I'm really focused on is a lot is the reference image, you know, my photo or whatever I'm looking from. Matching those colors. It's more about colors than anything else. Get the colors in the right spot, and then I'm always worried about, you know, don't use too much paint, right? Because I don't want a slippery mess. The next question here is, how much time do I need to spend practicing to get better? What I would do is I would try to practice once or twice a week versus like trying to cram a bunch into one week and then not paint the rest of the month. Do it consistently. You don't need to do it as much that way if you don't have a lot of extra time. But I know time is sometimes not something we have a lot of. So this next question, do you ever do any glazing? Not so much in oil, but I definitely glaze a lot when it comes to acrylic because that's really what dry brush blending is. You're glazing wet paint over the dry paint to try to get a fuzzy result. You know, you want fuzziness in your, in the thing that you're painting, soften it out. So I'm always using glazing when it comes to acrylics. All right, this next question, they are trying to get me into trouble. Do you prefer to use oils or acrylic? I'm going to stay kind of neutral on that one. I like them both, and they both have different things that are really easy and really hard about them. I've got a couple of good videos where I do side-by-side -side comparison of oils versus acrylics, which may help you to decide whether or not you want to go with oils or acrylics. I will say the acrylics, they clean up pretty easy, but the blending is a little, har it's a little harder. It's kind of up to you. So I've got a question here about acrylic paint. How do you stop it from drying so quickly? That's a good question because sometimes it can be so frustrating if it just dries and you're trying to blend. The best thing you can do is, if you know you need it blended, work fast. Just get it as, as much done as you know you can, and then come back and do dry brush blending on top of that. So for instance, I would paint in my blue sky and I would just let it dry. I'd walk away for a few minutes, do something else for a few minutes, come back, let it, now that it's dry, you can then glaze or dry brush blend your clouds right over that, and it's way easier. Because if you try to paint clouds over, over an already wet acrylic sky, you probably will end up drying before you finish your clouds. All right, the next one here says, how old are you? I am 24 right now. I have always wanted to know how you set up your composition for each painting. So this can vary a little bit from week to week. Some weeks I'm just painting straight from a photo that I've taken or a photo that Sophie has taken. And sometimes it's a little more loose than that and things are a little more subject to change. One thing I do recommend that everybody do is map out what you want to paint ahead of time. It may just be with a piece of paper and a pencil, but just locate each element. You know, I've, I want a tree on the left, I want my pond on the right, and you look at it and say, uh oh, that doesn't look right. You figure out why it doesn't look right on the paper. And when you go to actually painting it, it'll work much better. If you don't like your reference image, it's not gonna look any better when you go to paint it. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> This next question is about trees. How do you decide where to put the light source on each branch? And even how do you decide where the branches should be? I think one of the best things you can do is hold your brush with a brush. Hold it from the back and, and be nice and loose, as loose as you can be, because what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow you to just create that, the looseness and airiness of a tree. You don't want it to look mapped out. So you're looking more at the general shape of the tree. If there's a spot on the tree that doesn't look right, you'll go back and add more highlight or more dark. You definitely want most of your light, we'll just say the light's coming from the left. So you want most of your light on the left, a little bit in the middle, kind of sticking forward, a few branches catching the light, and just a sprinkling on the right, and that should get you a nice rounded looking tree. In a landscape painting, what elements or techniques do you still find challenging to master? It's an interesting question because it's not something that I think about a lot. But one thing that I would like to get better at is foreground water, like close up water where you can, you're like looking down, you can see that one big rock under the water with all the detail. And then the rock kind of sticks out and it looks different. You know, it's like a different color. And it's so pretty. And, and I'd like to get better and better at doing kind of sparkly close up water. So, you know, maybe the next few videos might be that. We'll see. Color mixing techniques to help create depth. So using color is one of the best ways to create depth. Of course, the other thing that you would do is you'd be using values, your lighter values in the back, and then your higher contrast, darker and brighter, you know, contrast, dark and light stuff right in the foreground. That helps create depth. But as far as color is concerned, your blues tend to recede. Purples are nice in the shadows, especially around the mid-tones. And then for the foreground, you want everything very warm, a lot of reds, a lot of warm browns, and that helps it to look more like a foreground. If you paint the sun or moon in the background, how do you get the sun rays to come off of that? So generally all it takes is just loading up the blender brush and giving a nice pull, straight pull, right? But one problem you may run into is if you have too much paint in the background, it tends to just become muddy. 
a tip you can use is just to take a, a shop towel, and if I wanted, you know, a sun ray there, you just blend that area away with a shop towel, take all that paint off, and then you can put your sun ray right over that. So for instance, if I had a big thick cloud, I would wipe that off first and then pull my sun ray over that cloud. The same is true with a mountain. All right, I like this next one. How do you know which colors to mix when you're using a reference photo? I see you mixing so many colors at once. Sometimes my palette does look like a kind of a mess, but that's okay. The best thing you can do is kind of break it down into small sections. So let's take a tree trunk, for instance. You look on that highlight side, you see gold and you see, you see some yellows and some greens even in that bark, and you want to add as many of those to your painting as possible. You don't have to match your photo's color perfectly, but use it as an encouragement to add more color because if you look at a photo, there's usually thousands of colors in something like a tree. So many different variants. How did you learn to paint? Was it difficult in the beginning or did it just come naturally? As you saw in my first painting video, it didn't come naturally. You can actually see the change over the years. If you go back to my first video here that's still public, you can actually work forward through the years and kind of see how the painting process developed a little bit. It's just a lot of practicing and you've seen most of my practicing. All right, this next one, a little bit controversial. If I'm not that great at drawing or I'm just a little lazy, is it cheating? To, I'm just gonna paraphrase a little bit long. Is it cheating to trace it out basically is the question. For me, I don't do a lot of tracing because I do a lot of landscape and I don't want anything tight necessarily. But if you're doing something like a landmark or a structure that needs to look correct, or even a person or a portrait, it wouldn't be a bad idea to sketch it out. I don't think it's cheating. You're just using the tools available to help you create a better painting and help you learn. If you've ever taken an art class with me, we have a basic sketch on the canvas and it helps everybody kind of stay on the same plane. You'll notice that the sketch usually gets covered up in the first five minutes anyways. I saw the video of you teaching Sophie how to paint. Is she an artist also? Well, she hasn't done any painting since then, but we've been so busy. Plus we have the two-year-old, which makes just about everything busy, right? But maybe in the future we'll get her back on and do another one, because I know you guys enjoyed that. What is the best way to clean brushes while painting? My odorless thinner gets cloudy fast. I'm probably the worst person to ask about cleaning brushes. But I'll give you a tip anyways. What you can do is if you don't want your paint thinner to get cloudy is just dip the brush in, wipe it out on a paper towel, and that takes away you know, most of the pigment and then you can dip it and wipe it and dip it and wipe it until it's starting to be very clean on the paper towel and then you can finish cleaning it in your paint thinner or baby oil, whatever you wanna use. All right, the next question is when to use a ground layer and what color to choose for the ground layer. So I think what you mean by ground layer is like if you wanted to just paint the whole canvas brown, for instance, I, I hope that's what you were thinking. But even if it's not, it's a good tip. So for acrylic paintings, I almost always tone the canvas with just any color. It could be red, yellow, green. Have we done blue? Certainly brown. Brown is very, very common. And you can do that in oil paintings, and I have done that in the past. Pink, I think we did something in pink, if I remember right. But what, that, what you can do is you can just allow that color to glow through the painting, you know? You'll, you'll be painting a cloud and you'll scrub and a little of that'll come through, it'll show through. And it gives your whole painting that, just that warmth coming through or, or a cool tone coming through. So definitely experiment with that. I would use acrylic paint even when painting oils. So you can, you can prime with acrylics because your gessos are all acrylic based anyways. Next question is about my easel. What kind of easel do I use? This is actually one that I built myself. It's made from birch wood, stained it dark. I've had it for years actually. And it's made to accommodate, you know, an 18 by 24, not much else. But one thing I like about it is that it's not adjustable. Like those angles are locked in. So there's not a lot of rattling or anything that goes on. So mostly made it just to film with. Well, that's about all the time that we have for questions today. But I just wanted to say thank you guys again so much. I really appreciate the support. Thank you for the questions too. That was a lot of fun. I'll see you in the next painting video. Thanks for watching.